Well, Australia's quarterly population has fallen for the first time since these records were taken in 1980s. The Bureau of Stats says our population dropped by 4,225.69 million people. Joining me live now here in the studio to discuss this is our business editor, Ross Greenwood. Ross, Ross there's widespread implications, aren't there, for business and the government's budget when it comes to this point. And I noticed in particular, too, a lot of the people are leaving from from Melbourne, from Victoria. Well, yeah, but no surprise there, yeah. obviously, with yeah. lockdowns and all that type of thing. Those people would have been trying to get back home. Mm. Um, remember, this is about not having foreign students coming into Australia. Yep. Uh, it's a situation whereby they, they actually reckon, even though this is where these records are actually kept, they say it's actually since the First World War we haven't seen the population shrink right. in this way. So it goes all the way back to there. Now, what you can imagine is that once we get our borders open, this is a reason why the whole issue about what Alan Joyce is saying, the boss of Qantas, that he wants international borders open by the end of October. The government even is saying similar things right now. Uh, and the idea is that they want to get this population growth going pretty quickly. And remember that Australia is going to be a, a, a really desirable destination for people living overseas, given our track record on coronavirus, given the ravages of coronavirus in the United States, in Europe, across many parts of Asia, you're going to see that a lot of people are going to, going to yeah. want to come to Australia and New Zealand. And so the idea I would suggest is even though population growth rates right now are very low, and that technically should be bad news for business, should be bad news for property prices, should be bad news for a whole bunch of things. My feeling is that the government, as soon as the borders are open, are going to literally allow these population growth rates to grow quite rapidly in the short term. And that, again, becomes good news for, say, for example, things like housing prices, good news for the economy at large and for domestic demand. And that's one of the things I think that the government is going to bank upon to try and get its budget at least back into some sort what, of reasonable shape. Increasing migration. 100%. There is no doubt. And again, that is a political hotspot in Australia yeah. uh, because what you can even say yesterday, for example, is those employment numbers were some of the very best employment numbers anywhere in the world. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is because Australians have got back to work. 88,000 people in the last month found pretty much full-time employment, not part-time, full-time employment. Good for the government, good for the country, good for those families. Yeah. Um, but as I say, the interesting thing is right now, those families are not competing against a whole bunch of, you know, sort of, if you like, foreign arrivals coming into this country who also might be looking for jobs as well. Interesting too. Uh, I would have thought that the stock market would have responded a little bit better to this news yesterday, but... But she went backwards. She went backwards, and there's a there's a perverse reason for this. Right. But it actually has continued the theme overnight as well in the United States, and that is when you suddenly get really good economic news, the markets start to think about long-term interest rates rising. Right. So what you saw here yesterday on the markets, and you saw it in the United States overnight, long-term government bonds rising. So this morning, Australia's long-term government bonds are sitting at 1.78%. That's the 10-year government bond. That's the interest rate on that. Now, that's risen from 0.72% late last year. You can see here the chart. It's risen from October last year up to where it is now. Now, normally that would frighten investors, and it has given them a, a, least, a, least a little pause for concern. You compare that with the two-year government bond rate at the moment, it's 0.1%. Mm. So, basically, it's 17.8 times more than what the two-year rate is. And so, really, this is the reason why stock markets are becoming a little bit wary about whether the Reserve Bank yeah. might ultimately have to increase rates more quickly than what they say, even though the Reserve Bank is steadfast in saying yeah. that it wants interest rates low for the next three years. The, the rebound, not just here, has been extraordinary, but in the US too, it's been extraordinary too. It has been, and that's really been the thing. So, so in, and the other point about it is what we know, when people are locked down, when they get out, yeah. they want to travel, they want to spend, and when governments are spending in the United States $1.9 trillion, giving $1,400 yeah. literally out there with every man, woman and child, yeah. that money's going to be spent. Shortest recession in history, is it? Shortest recession in history. It's yeah. incredible. But remember that New Zealand looks like it might be going back into a second recession. Oh. So again, the, yeah. the triggers, the levers from the government are very important to watch. Okay, at the Ross Green, we appreciate that. We'll talk to you soon.